Hello and welcome to my October 2018 Patreon Q&A video. It took me a while to get to this. It's just, it just is what it is, I guess. But I really want to close out this year doing the full 12 Q&As. And I think when we run into 2019, I'm going to change some things up. But it has been fun doing these kind of monthly Q&As. And I have a few more questions that I was kind of building up from last time. So I'll uh, I'll get to those in this video, obviously, which you're watching right now. So Nick asks, if you could live in any fictional universe, what would it be? Like go to Hogwarts or something like the Star Wars universe? And, you know, Hogwarts would be a very interesting universe to, to go into and to live in. Uh, obviously, you would assume that I'd have to be a wizard so I could do magic, which is even more of a kind of incentive to want to live in that universe. Then you have Star Wars. Would, would I be a Jedi? Would I get to wield a lightsaber? Use the Force, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of uh, things to consider. But I, I actually think all those things included, the, the, the fictional universe I would like to live in would be the quasi-fictional universe of the movie Poco Rosso, the Hayao Miyazaki film from 1992, animated movie about a a crimson pig, as they call him, and he flies around, and he's a humanoid pig, you know, he's been cursed to look, look like a pig, but he flies around the Adriatic Sea in a, in a seaplane, and so it's this kind of very dreamlike exotic life uh, in Croatia, the coasts of Croatia, the, the seas of Croatia, the Adriatic Sea and in Italy as well. And there's like this this hotel, the Hotel Adriano, which is this hotel on a small little island in kind of like an alcove, well not even an alcove really, but it's more like a bay, I suppose. And all the all the seaplane pirates they they meet up there, and then Porco has his own kind of private island hideaway, and it's so idyllic and gorgeous and lush, and to spend my days flying around in the clouds uh, and living that kind of romantic kind of uh, uh, nostalgic lifestyle, you know, there's a feel of nostalgia to that film that just kind of washes over you even though it's not something you can never really relate to there's just this i don't know days gone by kind of feel i just i love that world i want to live in that world i want to go to croatia and see at least a rough approximation of what that would look like because i love the setting of that film and to me it's more about the kind of you know porco kind of <laughs> lounging on his private island with the little beach enclosed inside an actual alcove um, you know, just kind of just living the life, basically, even though he lives a cursed life, nonetheless. Now, I wouldn't want to be Porco himself, but perhaps just a pilot uh, who could just spend his days kind of just chilling out, drinking and, you know, just hanging out. You know, it's just one of those things as great as Hogwarts would be in Star Wars, something a bit more normal, but nevertheless slightly fantasy like because that kind of lifestyle is, you know, for some people, perhaps who are rich and can afford that kind of thing. But, you know, it's, uh, again, I, I'm looking at an animated movie, so it's going to be a little bit out of the realms of reality. So, But it feels like it could be achievable, you know, uh, in some way, shape, or form. So that's going to be my, my weird answer to that one. Number two, complete change of subject, but I noticed in the UK only Deadpool 2 um, Steelbook is the £35 4K one. Notice it's also the same with Jurassic World 2 and others. Do you think this is a thing now? Um... Do you think uh, movies will go straight to 4K steelbooks for 35 to 40 quid now? I think that, yeah, that that, that might be a, a kind of a way for the companies to kind of make more money to kind of go 4K, 4K, 4K. And there are certain people who will just blindly kind of fold over their money and say, here, to, you know, give me the 4K steelbook, even if they don't have a 4K player. I've seen a lot of people who do that. They get the 4K, they're like, oh, this is the 4K steelbook. They don't have a 4K player, you know. And yes, it's a way of future proofing, but I think that people get a bit too carried away with that kind of thing. Uh, or at least they seem to, but hey, it's a free country, you can do whatever you want with your money. But, you know, I, I do think that it's kind of a ploy to get people to spend more money. But you, you are getting that disc, you are getting the Blu ray and the 4K and the Steelbook. So, you know, the, the, it's up for debate whether the price point is worth it or not. But it does seem like that's where they're going. Um, to only do the 4K steelbook seems like a bit of a jip to me. But then you've got to kind of you've got two things to produce. Then even though it's the same steelbook, 
then you have to get a steel book with the different, you know, the, the more uh, discs can be held inside it, all that kind of stuff. So maybe it's a production issue where it's just cheaper to have the one 4K steel book with the three slots or whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's, for me, I'm not on the 4K bandwagon just yet. So, and and neither am I the steel book bandwagon. You know, there's um, not this a bandwagon, but you know, I, I don't collect them as much anymore. So it's not too much of an issue. Um, the only ones I really collect now are the Marvel steelbooks, and so I have the, I recently showed in an update, I think, the, the Thor Ragnarok steelbook, which I can actually show in a bit more of a good light, which, because it was, the lighting was abysmal last time, but this is such a gorgeous steelbook, and it has the, the 3D, there's lots of glare on it because it's so shiny, but it has the 3D steelbook, uh, the 3D steelbook, it has the 3D Blu-ray, which I have little to no interest in. But, uh, you know, if I had the 4K then, and it was a lot more expensive, then I might have hesitated, so... And you can kind of debate that, and, and, you know, it's kind of up for debate, I suppose, whether or not it's worth it to get all these 4K newfangled steelbooks. Um, thank you for the questions. Chris asks, what's your opinion on blind buying Blu-rays? What if you've never seen anything from the film? Uh, this is Chris, CM42 TV, by the way. What if you've never seen anything from the film, never seen a trailer, or have any idea what it is about? Are you scared that you won't like a movie even though you spent some money on the title? Uh, I could probably grab one for you right now that I, I couldn't tell you. Um, let me see. Here we go. So this is from the Masters of Cinema range. This is Spy Number 42. This is a film by Sasha Gutry. And it is La Poison. I don't know anything about this film. I'm assuming by the title it is French. Yes, it is. It's from 1951. I wouldn't have been able to tell you that. I don't know what it's about. I don't know anything about the director. With this, it's kind of a brand loyalty thing, and it's also kind of a collecting the massive cinema thing. So for me, blind buyers only real really happen in the massive cinema collection. For other kind of uh, labels and such, I always make sure I know at least something. There's got to be. I've got loads of Arrow video titles in front of me, so. Say something like uh, Life Force, which I've never seen, you know. I mean, the cover alone made me want to get this thing, but, you know, I knew that I think Patrick Stewart is in this, um, you know, and it directed by Toby Hooper, who, who's done some really good films. So for me, it's more based on, like, who directed it? Do I like their other stuff? What kind of a film is it? This is kind of sci-fi horror. I'll probably get some sort of enjoyment out of this based on my, you know, appreciation for sci-fi films and my, you know, mild enjoyment of horror films. So... That's my process on blind buying, is at least knowing something. I, I rarely ever pick up a film that I know nothing about, you know. So it, it, you can get into those pitfalls when you're collecting a certain you know, label, a certain collection, where you're like, well, I need spine number seven, so I'm getting spine number seven. Be damned what the film is. So, you know, so that, that pays off sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. But it, you know, you you need to build up kind of familiarity with that brand and label if you're doing something like that, like I have with the massive cinema collection, in which I know I'm probably going to be in good hands. So, hopefully that kind of answers the question and is sufficient enough, um, because we now have the last question, which is from, as I scroll through my phone, uh, Tom. How many films in your collection have you still yet to see? And this is kind of something that I, I read and kind of thought, hmm, <laughs> and I spent like about two hours going through my entire collection a few weeks ago, and I counted every single film I own on Blu-ray, how many I've seen and how many I haven't seen. Now, the first thing I did was I went through all of this collection, went through every film I have, looked at every one, counted, 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 all the films I haven't seen, and I'll give you the number now. The total number of films I hadn't seen in my collection was, at final count, 497 movies. Now, I didn't count the, the Pixar shorts collection, which has many short films, so if you were to include those Pixar short films as films, then it would be just over 500 films I haven't seen in my collection. I did count, um, you know, the, the Charlie Chaplin shorts as those films, so... You know, feature films, maybe you're looking at like 480 or something like that. So that's a lot. And then I thought, shit, I need to know how many I've seen in my collection. Because I suddenly felt like, is it really that many? That I mean, I knew it was a lot. I knew it was a lot of films I own that I haven't seen. Many that I've had for years and years and still haven't got around to. To me, that's great. To me, that's exciting. To me, I look at things on my shelf and I go, there's so many things I've never seen. It's like going into Blockbuster sometimes where it's like, wow, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. 
and you know the more I don't watch them you know maybe I get a little bit kind of uh, what's what's the word a little bit regretful that I haven't watched these films but at the same time uh, there's just something really um, pleasing to me about owning all these films I've never seen before because at any given point I can kind of find almost any kind of film that I, that I would like to see that I haven't seen and I can watch it. So I, I didn't, as I was going through the collection, count which films I had seen, so I had to go through the collection a second time. And on that second time, I actually found a few films that I'd missed. So um, yeah, around 500 films in my collection that I haven't seen. The films that I own in my collection that I have seen, 757. Like, whew, like I was so relieved, because <laughs> I really thought, holy shit, have, have I got more films that I haven't seen than films that I have? So just over 750, so it's a pretty decent amount and I'm actually really happy and again relieved with that final total. So there you go, that's the answer to your question. I mean, I could have just read that off and said, I don't know, quite a few, maybe a couple of hundred, but I did the math and the maths and uh, I, I counted them all. And so there's there's lots of cool stuff for me to watch. I could One day I could go into the collection and pick out a film like Sorcerer and give it a look for the very first time. Or I could feel a bit more like black exploitation and go for Foxy Brown, which I've never seen before, but I've seen Coffee, so I know kind of what to expect, so it's not entirely a blind buy. Or I could go for something that I haven't seen from a favorite director of mine, like Waking Life from Richard Linklater. See, this is just the stuff I can pick that's close to me at hand, so I really enjoy that about my collection, is having those things to grab and to be able to just watch for the first time. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this Q&A, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you're all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and call it into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you, because...